And in our case, our little site about veggies was small enough that all our pages really only, uh, all our pages could look the same. And, and so therefore we had one wireframe. And so what we're going to do is we're going to create a template for that wireframe. And then we'll go and clone that template over and over again to make all the pages on our site. Now the manner in which we're doing this, I'm a little less concerned about the stuff that I'm putting in the CSS than the stuff that I'm putting in the HTML. The reason for that is when we start cloning the HTML pages, we're going to have duplicate HTML code, which means that if there's an oversight, if I forgot a link or if I want to, you know, if I want to change something about the HTML, then I have to go back and change all the copies of it as well. Whereas given that the CSS is isolated in its own external file, if I decide to go back and change it, I only need to change it in one place. So it's less of a big deal. We got through most of the layout last time. Um, let's revisit where we were with that and let's take a look at maybe some other enhancements that we can, we can put uh, on it. What I want to do is I want to use kind of today to, to talk you know, a little bit about positioning, but really talk about a lot of different things that we've talked about, uh, about CSS and maybe a few things that we haven't. So here's our page from last time, our template. And again, you see we sort of achieved what we desired with the wireframe. All right, we have um, our banner, we have our navigation, we have our content area, and then we have a copyright um, on the bottom. Um, I'm going to do uh, make a couple little tweaks to this. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is I want the copyright to be really part of this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and edit that. And I'll tell you why I'm, I'm, I'm going to do this in a minute. I'm get rid of the position on the footer. And I'm going to actually make the footer part of the content div. And the reason I do this is if I do it this way then, I don't have to set, uh, set heights for the content div. I can just sort of let the the copyright information fall down under place wherever the content ends. And I don't have to worry about um, having it overflow on top of it. So now, all right, we did that. I think I kind of like that better. All right. Um, what I want to do then is I want to start um, making changes to this. Now, we put borders around them to make sure that we could see everything. That's, that's something that we might uh, eliminate. Uh, over over time. Um, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select some colors for this. Now, what might be an appropriate color for a page about vegetables? Green. Yeah, why not? Um, remember that we don't simply change colors just for the fun of it, right? We do try to make our pages look good, all right, you know. We want our pages to look good, but more importantly than that, we want the colors to sort of reflect or, or, or resonate with the theme of the page. So it would make sense a page about vegetables would have green colors. And more important than that, we want colors that will help the user visually sort out our page uh, at just even the quickest glance. I'm going to go to a resource that I have on Angel. This is a study that was done about user habits in viewing web pages. called The Importance of Being Pretty. Internet users g can give websites a thumbs up or thumbs down in less than the blink of an eye. In just a brief 1 20th of a second, people make aesthetic judgments that influence their rest of the experience with the site. All right. 
Um, like, you know, the old cliche, you don't get a second chance to make a first impression and, and all that. Besides looking good, though, one of the things I think that, that's uh, important is using coloring to sort of organize your page and let people see so it's not just one mass of stuff. And again, this is where choosing color judiciously helps. Um, if you pick, if you have no color whatsoever on your page, stuff tends to run together and, and it's, it's, hard, it's harder for the user to sort of separate your pages out into sections. If you use too many colors, then the reverse is true. It's too chaotic and again, the, the user will also lose their sense of what's grouped together and what's logical. Um, so you try, to, you try to strike a nice little balance there between too little and too much. Um, I'm going to go to my color scheme generator. And I'm going to pick a shade of green. And the nice thing is, is you can go and tone it down or make the green more yellowish if you want and so on. Let's go with that. That looks like a, a decent combination. I'm going to go and click on the color list there and it shows me the color codes for the um, five or so colors I've, I've chosen. Remember, you know, the idea is sort of like this. I would say white, black, and gray you sort of get for free, right? In other words, those don't really count um, towards the colors that you're using. Beyond that, then, you have uh, five choices here. That ought to be plenty to allow you to organize and to emphasize stuff uh, on the page adequately. So I'm going to go and I'm going to set the background of the page to this. So in my style. I'm going to go body, background, um, let's give that as a background. And let's make the default color black. All right. I'm then just going to go and, and pick these and I'm going to make the content area that color because that is um, sort of the lightest color. And since I have the most content on that, I'm going to want the most contrast to make it easiest to read. Um, let's make the navigation this color no and our banner we will put let's say All right, and now let's go and look at the page, see if we like it. All right. Ah, now this is starting to look like a veggie site, right, with, with all the green colors. And those are actually not bad colors. All right. Let's go and change the fonts, though, because I don't particularly like uh, this font. Um, I, I think we can do better uh, as far as the font goes. So let's go in and let's make... Um, the font, some other style. Now, generally speaking, there, there's, if I've talked much about fonts in this class, um, there, yeah, the, the, I get confused. I have, I have some, some of the folks in here in uh, a, a multimedia class where we did spend some time on that, so I do get confused. Um, there, there's two big 
uh, divisions between two. There, there, there's really two or three different kinds of fonts, uh, depending on how you, how you score it. Um, one of them is called a serif font. One of them is called a sans serif font. And the other, I guess, I would call a, a decorative font or a, a handwritten sort of font or a please do not use that kind of font is, is I guess, my take on it. Let's talk about the main uh, differences. A serif font has these little, little things on the end of letters that are called serifs. This little thing is called a serif. So if you notice the font that we're using here, notice there's a little thingy on the end of the M and on all the letters. Those are serif. So this is a serif font. Another kind of font that exists is what's called a sans serif font. Sans is French for without. So this doesn't have those little thingies on it. doesn't have the serif, so therefore this is a sans serif font. Um, the decorative fonts are, the, are sort of like the fake handwriting one or the comic sans serif or whatever where maybe it looks like a cursive A or something like that. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of those, so I, I very rarely will, will use those. Let's go in and put some letters in some fonts and get a better sense of that. For example, here is an A in the default Times New Roman, which is a serif font. Notice we have the little thingies here, the, link, the little serifs. Um, on there. Let's make it even bigger if we can. There we go. I'm going to use uh, another font, which is a sans serif font, Arial. Notice there is no little thingy for that. Lastly, I'm going to use, uh, I'll show you a decorative font that might be something like this font, Chiller. I suppose they have their place in the world, uh, but I, I generally speaking avoid those kind of things. I, I guess if you're working on a very specialized sort of presentation, then maybe something like that was, would, would be appropriate. Now, what about font selections? Well, font selections really can help your user um, read the page. They also can sort of set the mood. If you contrast, for example, the fonts used on, say, Apple's website, with the Wall Street Journal's website, you'll see that each of them very subtly create a bit of a mood for the page. So let's go to apple.com. They use the sans serif font everywhere. All right. And it sort of has the look that you would expect from Apple products. Um, the, 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 the image that they're trying to convey, being sleek, um, very much um, in tune with the world of design, I would say, and so forth. If we look in the Wall Street Journal site, you'll notice this has a very much more classic look. The typography even you know, matches the, the look on the, on the newspaper. Um, and it gives sort of a very classic look. It, it really is a different feel from what you would get on the Apple page, which makes sense. It's a different site. Uh, remember that you know, we can't come up with any cut, uh, hard and fast rules as far as, as, as web design goes, because it's all depending on the particular project you're, you're working on. The one thing this site does is this site uses serif fonts for the headlines and sans serif fonts for the body text. And that proves to be a pretty readable combination. All right? So that's what we're going to use on our site. All right? We're going to use the serif fonts because the serifs actually can help people read the letters and, and so on. Um, but on a smaller type, uh, the serifs sort of get in the way. So we will do it with sans serif uh, font for our content area. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put um, on the banner, I'm going to put a font family 
of one of the serif fonts. And usually what I do is I will go through Word and I'll pick one that I like. I, I deliberately do not want to pick Times New Roman because that's what we've been, you know, that's the default of the browser. Let's look at, here's one that I always like, Garamond. I think that's a very classic looking font, so we'll, we'll use that. When you define fonts, you typically will define a series of fonts and not just one font. The reason for that is you don't know if the person viewing your page has that particular font installed on their, on their computer. And therefore, you, you know, um, you want to give some options. So I might do something like give Garamond and something that would be similar to that, let's say Perpetua, all right? And then typically the last font on the list is a generic font, where you define whether you want, it, whether you want to use a serif font or a sans serif font. And the way it works is the browser will try the first font on your list. If it has it installed on that particular machine, that's the font it will use. If it doesn't, it goes on to the second font. If it doesn't, it goes on to the third, and so on until it hits the end of the line. Minimally, a browser will have a default serif or sans serif font, so the very last one is sort of a catch-all. I guess if it didn't have that, it would use whatever default font was on the browser. But I'll go and I'll say font family, Garamond, comma, Perpetua, comma, serif. Um, that's a good question. I'm not, I'm not 100% sure. I don't, I don't think you have to. Let's go and let's look at this. And notice that, I think that's nicer than Times New Roman. I like that a little bit better. All right. Let's go and set the navigation and content area then to use, um, sans serif fonts. Um, a very popular combination of sans serif fonts are Helvetica and Arial. Um, Helvetica is sort of the world's default font. Um, if you look around, you will see Helvetica all over the place. The one place you will not see Helvetica, however, is on a Windows machine because Windows uh, did not want to pay the licensing fee to the company that owns the, the licenses to that. So they developed their own font that looks almost exactly like Helvetica, and that's Arial. So, We'll go and we'll put those two in for our navigation and content. Now again, fonts are like colors uh, in the respect that um, you don't want to go crazy using too many of them. If you use different fonts, make sure that that means something. Make sure that the differences in the fonts are not just arbitrary, or not just you know making one paragraph one font, another paragraph a different font, but truly make it so that, that it means something. In other words, in our case, we've chosen a strategy where we're using one set of fonts for our headings and headlines. We're using another set of fonts for our navigation and, and body text. So let's go and let's look at that and see what it looks like. And I think it looks a lot better. I think we're moving in a, in a good direction here. Now, the thing to keep in mind, again, is we want to communicate and we want it to be as precise as possible. So therefore, um, I think choosing the right font uh, face, font family, really it can, can help you take something that sort of hits the mark and really zeroes in and, and hits the mark exactly. Now, a few other things that I don't particularly like about this. First of all, I would like that banner to extend um, a little bit further. It looks mighty cramped in there, all right? 
Now, there's several ways that we could do that. We could give it a width. We could give it a padding. Let's try a couple of them. I'm going to start out because this looks awful claustrophobic, right? And so does this. So I'm going to start out by giving some padding on the banner. And I will say padding. Um, let's try 10px. And what that will do is it sort of bumps it over from there. I still would like it a little bit wider. So what I can do is I can actually give it a width. And I could say, make the width of this um, 400 pixels. Let's see how that, how that does for us. All right. That looks fine. Or we'll at least say that that looks fine. We'll, we'll stick with that. All right. Now, I do want to go and I want to put in a heading in the content section. I'll put, like, say, an H2 in here. That will be, you know, the name of the page, whatever page I'm happen to be doing. And I will go in and I will want to make that not be sans serif, but I wanted to make serif. Remember, our strategy is to make all our headlines or headings um, serif. So what I can do is I can say in the content area, any H2, I want to have this font family list. Alright. And I think that looks really good. I did have a student one time say something to the effect that, you know, the websites they did, they, they felt weren't necessarily um, they, they were happy with what they were on one level, but they figured they, they felt that it lacked polish on another level. And really, I think the, the difference is, is really uh, attention to details. Uh, attention to just little details, little things. You know, not sticking with the default font. Making sure that things don't look too cramped by adding padding. Uh, using good quality images, a, a, and so on. I think all those things really add up to uh, a better website. Now, let's say I, I want to make, the one thing I don't like is I don't like that banner, Mike's Vegetable Site. I want that to be a little bit bigger. So what I can do is I can go into the CSS file and say, in the, whoops, in the banner section, any H1, I want the font size to be 2M. M is like uh, emphasis. So 2M would be twice as big as regular text. Let's go and save that and view it. doesn't make any difference. Let's make a bigger number. All right. Well, we went a little crazy there, huh? So let's try three. All right, still a little big. Yeah, 2.5. I could. A lot of ways uh, to handle that. We'll, if this doesn't work, we'll, we'll do that. Yeah, we'll stick with that. All right. Now, um, let's say I'm happy with the banner. Again, we could tweak this endlessly. We could actually make it so that there was less space between the H1 and, and the paragraph if we wanted to. Um, we'll leave that 
sort of thing for another day. All right. Let's, on, let's go on to the navigation section. And the navigation section, number one, looks very cramped here. All right. And number two, I want to give a little bit of room on the side, and I want to space things out. And the other thing I might want to do is I want to um, make the links look different. One thing I notice a lot of folks do when they change the color of their page is they'll change the colors of the, the, the content areas and the navigation areas, but they leave the colors of the links the same, which is, on most browsers, the default colors of blue for a link and so on down the line. And sometimes that isn't always the best thing to do. So we'll go back and we'll add some colors to these links. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the style sheet for this and I'm going to give some padding. Now that sort of cut off. Let's go and let's move the content over a little bit. All right. And let's move that down a little bit because that's overlapping. Actually, let's move both of those down because we added um, some padding and stuff to this. So let's move these down. All right, that's more the way I would like it. Now, let's say I want to add width to this. Again, I can set the width something like width hundred fifty pixels. Let's see what that gets us. All right, not bad for just guessing. Let's push that over a little bit again, the content area. All right. Let's push it over even more. I thought it was lined up right. It's actually underneath that other div. So let's go and make it 200. All right, there we go. So there's a little gap there. All right, now we want to make these look different than this. We don't want the default look for that. The first thing I want to do is it's correct to put your navigational links in an unordered list, but we probably don't want the bullet points there. Bullet points kind of look ugly in this case. So how do we do this? I don't remember. I kind of do, but I kind of don't. It might. But I'm thinking about what I'm going to have for lunch today. I'm thinking about what I'm going to have for dinner. I'm thinking about what's on TV tonight. That takes up a lot of space in my brain, right? Yeah, exactly. Because I can't run out to the internet to find out what I want for dinner tonight. That's something I have to think myself. But I can run out to the internet to say, how can I remove bullet points from an unordered list? All right. Styling lists. Oh, look. Unordered list. Try it yourself. Blah, 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 blah. shows how to change that. It doesn't show exactly, though, how to get rid of them. Yeah, it, it is. List style type none would be it. All right. Now, the point is, uh, again, though, yeah, here we go, list style type none. So I can go in here and I can say, what do I want to have a list style type of none? I want, in the navigation area, the UL. Because if I have another list, if I have a list in the content area, I might very well want that to have the bullet points because I might be you know, using a bulleted list. So I'll go and I will say list style type none.
All right, there go the bullet points. How do you suppose I could put some more vertical space between these things? Padding or margin, probably. Now, what would I put that on? Okay, could probably do this a couple different ways. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put on the list item, I'm going to put um, a padding, let's say, or a margin. I guess it really doesn't matter. No, then that would do that to the navigation div. So, like, for example, I already have a padding on the navigation div. And if I did a margin on it, that would say that's the margin for that div, not for the items within that div. So therefore, I'm going to say I want my LIs in here to have a margin of 10 pixels. All right, not bad. Um, I actually could do margin dash top, and it would have just about the same effect. All right. The only difference is it removes the margin on the left. So that's a little more what I like. So now this is starting to look more like a navigation uh, div. I still don't like the blue and the maroon, but those are the default colors of the browser. Remember, the way your page looks depends on what style rules you have set along with the defaults of the browser. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and I'm going to say nav whoops, a color white. Let's see what that does for me. Oh, too hard to read. Not a good idea. Make a color of, <laughs> make a color a, a dark shade of gray. And let's make the font size a little bit bigger. So the font size is a little bigger. All right. Let's now go and make so that when we put our mouse over these, it changes to a different color. So let's go and let's change. We do that with what's called a pseudo class. And we say a hover. And let's make it a lighter shade of gray. And we'll see if that's noticeable enough. Now when you put your mouse over it, little indication that your mouse is on that, and you can go and do that. All right. Let's say we're happy with the navigation now. All right. Again, there's more things we could do. Yeah. No, because I haven't supplied a visited. Let's make a visited link. What do you want to do for a visited link? Yeah, let's make it, let's try it being red. That one shows as red because we're on that page. And I, whether you like that or not, you know, we could, we could tweak it or play with it. Um, it actually doesn't look bad. It certainly stands out. We could um, go and maybe make it a darker shade of red if we wanted to. Maybe that wouldn't be quite as... Hmm. But anyhow, it didn't originally because we didn't have the... Um, visited link set. All right. Notice now it doesn't give us the mouse over effect. This is one of those things that we could 
by rearranging them, we could let the hover take precedence over the visited. There aren't tons of things that the sequence matters in, but that's one of them. All right. So let's say we're happy with the banner, and let's say we're happy with the navigation. Let's go and let's get happy with the content. I really don't think there's a lot to do here. I probably will want to put a width on it because I don't like sort of the way that it sticks out. And I might want to play a little bit with the positioning. And I might want to uh, give some padding. So let's go in and let's create, let me close this first of all. Let's go on the content area and let's give it a width of 600 pixels. And let's give it a padding of 5 pixels. And let's move it over just a little bit. Yeah, that wouldn't work too well. All right. Um, yeah, doesn't look bad. We could we could fiddle with this. I'm going to get rid of the border on the um, on the uh, uh, copyright notice, and I'm going to make it smaller. The the font. So I'm going to say font size. Point eight M. Point eight M would be eighty percent the the normal size, so it'd be a little smaller. All right. And I I might want to make that a little longer. Just uh, make a width of five fifty pixels. Yeah, that's fine. If we wanted it really to balance out, we could add these widths all together and figure out exactly where that would go. Um, it probably would be, let's see, that content starts at 170, no, 190, and has 600 width, so that would be 790 plus 5 padding on each side, that would be 800. So if we made this 800, I'll, unless I, no, 780, because that has 82. That has, has padding, too. That should line up. Eh, I'm a little off. All right. Five off. Yeah, let's. Yeah. Yeah. So now let's go and look at this. Yep, still not quite. Let's do five more. <laughs> All right, there we go. No, nah, that's fine. We could, yeah, right, right. Uh, now, we haven't been very good, have we? Because we have not tested this in Internet Explorer. Ooh, well, so let's do that. And I promise if this doesn't look good, I'm not going to complain about Internet Explorer. Okay, maybe maybe I will. Notice there's a little bit of a difference in the gap. Yeah. Now. My guess is, is the padding is interpreted differently. Let's take that out to prove that to ourselves. All right. The padding accounts for some of the difference. Um, yeah, it looks like there, there could be a difference in the height and all that. Now, at this point, we would have to decide, is this a big enough difference for us to wrestle with or not? All right? And some would say yes, some would say no. I'm going to say no. All right? I, I'm not going to worry about this. And uh, yes? Oh, 
An ordered list or an unordered list? Just like this. Just going to put the word item a few times. Uh-huh. Or list of black tag, right? So yeah, here's our paragraph. Start paragraph, end paragraph. Start ordered list, and ordered list. How would you indent a paragraph? Do you mean indent the first line of the paragraph or indent the whole thing? Okay. What? No. Let's go. And we can go and again, I am thinking about A lot of different things. So, so I could go in here and say within the content area. and indents the first line of that. Um, there's other things to do, too, that, that you can do, too. Uh, now, now, keep in mind, as I said before, you know, you, you're, you know, you're going you're gonna to remember the things that you do all the time. I mean, you could probably tell what things I do more than what I don't do because the things I do commonly, you know, I just whip off the top of my head, color, background color, you know, and so on. The ones that I'm ha I either sit here and scratch my head or pretend that I don't know so I can look it up or whatever are the ones that you use less frequently and then you can look them up. All right? there's, in my opinion, there's no point trying to memorize this as long as you're savvy enough like, to know where to look. All right? That is a big thing and that's a little bit of a hurdle for students to get over. Is you sort of have to be familiar enough with it to sort of have an idea of where to look. Because the answer won't necessarily jump out on you even in W3 school sites. Like there I thought, well, that's, a, that's an aspect of formatting the text, so I clicked on text and the answer was there. Whereas if you did, if you look for it in another place, you might not find it. All right. So now we have this. All right. Now we have this. I'm going to make sure that the HTML is good and correct because I'm, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start cloning this. All right. In other words, I'm going to start making specific versions for each of my pages. All right? So therefore, if I decide, ooh, I want another link, I'm sort of out of luck. So what I'm going to do, first of all, is I'm going to make my home page. And I'm going to go in and I'm going to call this home. And I'm going to replace the Greek text with my actual text. This is my page about vegetables, my site about vegetables. Now, keep in mind, you know, I'm just putting in just a very short paragraph. Um, you know, you, you would want to put a reasonable amount of content on, on each one of the pages. But now I can go and I can save that. And now I can do, go and do a save as for each of the other pages. So I can save as carrots. All 
farming. Then I can save it as salary. I can save it as the dreaded vegetables I hate page. Brussels sprouts. <laughs> Brussels sprouts. Yeah, I don't like those either, but. And then I can create my links page finally with all my respective links. All right. Well, whatever I thought was meaningful for the for the site, right? I, I mean, I, yeah, looking to other. Yeah. The idea is is maybe I'd have some recipes about that use vegetables or whatever. So that's not like part of my site. That's external links. Yeah. So really, whatever you want. Now, what we have is there's our home page, carrot page, salary page and so on. Yeah, now they're all red because we visited them all. And notice that, again, if you're not looking real closely, you don't see that the whole page changes. You just see that because, again, we made our template and we cloned it. All right? Now, if I decided that, gee, I want a picture in the banner, um, I'm going to be annoyed with myself because I should have decided that before I started cloning because now I have five pages that I have to go back and change the banner on five pages. All right? Or maybe more realistically, if my boss comes in and says, oh, you know what? A banner would look good here. You know, at that point, or, or a, a photo would look good in that banner. At that point, I'm going to be annoyed with them because, again, I've already cloned it and I've, I've add it on to, to the amount of work I have to do to change it. Um, so therefore, it's important that you will get your template down before you go on and, uh, and start cranking out these pages. Now, notice that it did not take, you know, and, and I know that, that on the individual pages, I just kind of put in some placeholder content. The point is, though, is making a five-page website isn't five times as long as making a one-page website, right? Um, because the first page, especially if you have you know, one wireframe, takes up the bulk of the time. You know? So generating the template, if you have one template or two templates or whatever, that's going to take up a substantial portion of your time. Making each individual page, then, is really pretty straightforward. Um, you just clone it, and you change the, the area that is specific to that page. Now. If I decide that I want to change the CSS in any way, all right, that, no sweat, right? I could, for example, let's say I'm in a bad mood and I want the site to look a dark gray. I could go and save that and look and the site's a dark gray. And every page on the site is a dark gray, all right? Because I can just make that in one, I can make that change in just the external CSS file, all right? So the CSS, I'm less concerned about getting that perfect, because I can always go back and easily make that change and have the change reflected on all the pages. The HTML, though, I want to make sure I have down pretty well. All right, what will we do next time? What we will do next time is 
we'll play around with our own Zen Garden-like effects here. That is, we will take this one page and we will style it and make different versions of this page that don't really even look like the same web page, but it will be with just a different style sheet applied. So that's what our task will be next time. We'll go through several iterations uh, to make it look different. All right, we'll use different techniques and, and, and so on. So that's what our task will be next time. All right, we'll see you over in lab.